Bum, 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 bum. You know, Chris, what? if he has tanks, you could offer me Nick Saban right now. I wouldn't trade him for Rocky Lowe. I would not. I would not if, in a million years. I wouldn't years. even entertain the thought. <laughs> wouldn't even I entertain wouldn't. the thought. I wouldn't. I would miss Rocky way too much. Could you, imagine if we, our, uh, could you imagine if we had to muddle through an, uh, an oh interview with goodness. Nick Saban once a week? Oh, my <laughs> God. It'd be painful. It would be painful. <laughs> that would be Welcome awful. Welcome to the Aztecs Power Hour. Chris and Ben with you now until 9 o'clock every Tuesday morning here on Extra Sports 1360. And joining us right now to kick off the Power Hour in 2013 is the head football coach at San Diego State University, Rocky Long, with us here on Extra Sports 1360. Uh, Rocky, i got to ask you what you thought of that game last night. Uh Boy, Alabama sure showed some impressive football on the field. Yeah, it was a little disappointing. I kind of hoped it was going to be a really good game. You never know going into those games what kind of game it's going to be, but Alabama was awful good. I, I'm not sure that uh, Notre Dame was at their best, but I'm not sure they were the second best team in the country either. You subscribe to the fact that, like, if they played ten times, Alabama would win all ten, or do you <laughs> do you think that there's a chance that uh, had everything gone perfectly, Notre Dame might have found a way to steal that game? Oh, I don't think anybody can win ten in a row against another good team. No. <laughs> okay. What 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 do you what did you see though in that game last night that uh, Alabama did so right? I mean. Uh, you know, maybe Notre Dame is a little rusty. It's a long time in between games when you're waiting until, what was it, January 7th last night to play the last game of the season. But what did they do so well from a coach's perspective? Well, I think Alabama has more talent, especially on offense. Uh, I think both defenses are very good, but I think Alabama has more talent on offense. I think they executed much, much better. Now, the layoff is the same for both teams, so you can't worry about that and you can't make excuses. But, uh, I think Alabama's offense is much better than Notre Dame's offense. Rocky Long is with us, and of course there was some talk that uh, you guys might get a chance to play Alabama next year, but uh, that's not going to happen. If you were preparing to play Alabama, Coach, uh, how would you you go about it? (laughs) Well, obviously you try to be able to run the ball and and keep the ball in your hands as much as possible, but they're awful good on defense, too. I I don't think there's any doubt they're probably the best team in the country. Uh, there's two or three others I think can compete against them. Obviously, Georgia did a nice job against them in their championship game. LSU did a nice job, and I think other than the Southeast Conference, I think Oregon would have given them a great game. I I don't see anybody slowing down Oregon's offense. Coach, do you really, do you how much respect do you have uh, watching a guy like Nick Saban and, and what he's put together there at Alabama? I mean, to win three championships in four years as an as a fellow college football coach, whether you like him, dislike him, know him, don't know him, I, I just wonder what your thoughts are on the job that he's done down there. I think he's done a great job. I, I think they have all the advantages, but there are several other teams in the country that all, have all the advantages too. Their resources are unlimited. Their reputation, their tradition is unlimited. So he's going to get good players, but being able to make them focus and play at that high level over and over and over again, that means he's a great football coach. I, you know, he's done things that uh, supposedly Bear Bryant's the best football coach that ever lived. He's done things Bear Bryant couldn't do there. So I, you got to respect what he's done. A couple of news items coming out of your program this week as well, Coach. Let's start with Gavin Escobar. Uh, that, that announcement was made official yesterday that he is going to bypass his senior season and make himself eligible for the NFL draft. What what advice did you give Gavin? T- t- talk about how that process works, because certainly I think we all think that Gavin has a, a future on the NFL level. <clears throat> well, I do it the same way with all of them. Uh, any Anytime we think a guy might be a high, high draft choice, we contact the NFL. Uh, the NFL has a service where they'll give you uh, an evaluation of the young man in question and, and decide on about where he's going to be drafted. They let the young man know that. They let us know that. And then, obviously, you and the young man talk about it a little bit. But, uh, you know, I want them all to stay in school. I want them to finish their college career and graduate from college and then move on to the pros. So, obviously, I give them – I don't give them advice. I I tell them the benefits of staying in school. I tell them we'd love them to stay. Uh, But, basically, it's up to them and their family to decide what's best for for him and, you know, his future. And – and so we had that little conversation, and then they went home after the bowl game, and then he contacted me last week, and we, we talked a little bit more on the phone, and he, he told me he was coming out, and I, I wish him the very best of luck. I mean, obviously they think that's best for him. I think there's no doubt that he's an NFL football player and he'll have a good career. Also, Coach, I know you're in the market to replace offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig, who left for Wisconsin last week. Now, uh, I have reports, and I reported last night that uh, Bob Toledo was on campus, and I – 
I believe that he is expected to get that job. I don't know if you're ready to make an official announcement, but I'm going to ask you about it because I know you have a history with Coach Toledo at both UCLA and New Mexico going back and working with him. If you can say anything about Coach Toledo and whether he'd be a, a good choice for the job, if that is indeed the case. Well, the process is ongoing. Uh, Coach Toledo was here yesterday, and we interviewed him for the job, but uh, we're in contact with uh, three other guys that we're talking to pretty seriously about it. Uh, you know, one of them's on our staff. Uh, Jeff Horton is, is being, I'm basically interviewing Jeff Horton for the job, too, and we'll, we'll do what's best, we'll, we'll do what we think is best for the program. But Coach Toledo was here yesterday and got interviewed for the job, sure. All right, Coach. Uh, And Ludwig going to Wisconsin. I mean, talk a little bit about the loss of Andy Ludwig because he's done a hell of a nice job for you the last couple of years. Yeah, Andy's done a great job, and we're we're sorry to see him go. But uh, there are times in your coaching career that uh, a job comes up that you just can't turn down. And and we wish him the best of luck. I mean, I'd love the consistency if he was able to stay, but there was an offer on the table that he couldn't refuse. And we wish him the best of luck, and we'll move on with our program, and I'll sure, I'm sure he'll do a great job for Wisconsin. It's your fault, Coach, because you're having so much success the last several years. This is the problem when you go 9-4 and four every year and go to bowl games. People start wanting to steal your coaches, right? Well, that, that's a good problem to have. I mean, they think that <laughs> maybe our coaches have magic. We don't. I promise you, we don't have any magic whatsoever. But everybody, whenever you uh, have a program that wasn't very good for a long time and all of a sudden you have success, they think you're doing something different than everybody else, and so they start hunting your coaches. Coach, you've already you've always remained pretty even keel when it came to the talk about the conferences and the move to the Big East. Uh, is the uncertainty that's going on right now, I know that Jim Sterk is reevaluating things based on Boise State going back to the Mountain West. Uh, does that change anything for you and your program? And, and what are your thoughts on Boise State kind of moving back and uh, the upcoming decision that SDSU needs to make? Well, first of all, I have no control over it, so I, I don't worry about it. Uh, you know, it, the process of recruiting, we're right in the middle of recruiting, and we've done really, really well. I think we... I think we're going to sign 19 or 20 guys. We have 17 committed at this time. Uh, now, some of our, our recruits are a little, you know, they're not nervous about it. They just want to know what's going on just like everybody else's, and I don't think it'll be a problem in recruiting because I think it'll be decided by the by the end of the month, and by the end of the month everything will be fine. But uh, I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I have uh, some personal feelings about it, but uh, for the program's sake, we'll do whatever is in our best interest, and I have confidence in Jim Sterk that he's going to do what's best, what's best for us as a program, and we'll play whoever they put on the program and try to win them all. And now, do you care to share any of your personal thoughts about it, Coach? No, I'm a company man. <laughs> you are an excellent company man. You always have been, no question. Rocky Long is with us, the Aztecs head football coach. Coach, what positions are you going to be You're talking about recruiting, and fans always want to know. What positions are you recruiting and which areas of the football program are you looking to beef up a little bit more than others, maybe? Well, we're, we're looking for help in all areas, but uh, except for quarterback, we have a young man we signed last year that gray shirted Chase Favreau that will be coming in to be our, our other quarterback competing for the job. Other than that, uh, we're, we're trying to get two or three running backs. We're always in the market uh, for offensive linemen. We're probably going to take four offensive linemen. Hopefully two of them are junior college players. Since Gavin is gone, we have uh, I told you we had 17 commitments. We got 19 scholarships available. Uh, we're looking for some more tight ends right now. Uh, hopefully a junior college tight end and, and move on. We're going to take one wide receiver. Uh, we have six se- senior DBs uh, next year, uh, all safeties. So we're, trying, we're hunting for about four guys to come in and play DB as freshmen and uh, linebacker, we're in pretty good shape. But defensive line, we're in pretty good shape. So that's basically the plan right now. I know we talked about Gavin Escobar earlier. You've also got some seniors who are going on, including Leon McFadden, who are interested in playing in the next level. Now, you've got your own program to worry about once those guys are gone. But uh, do you keep an eye on the guys? I mean, the Senior Bowl coming up and the Shrine game. And do you have an idea as to where, uh, you know, like Leon McFadden might be looking at in the NFL draft? Well, it's all a guess because you talk to scouts. You know, we have scouts come in here all through the season, and and you ask them their opinion, and they have an opinion. And 
I, all of them uh, with Leon, it's all uh, second, third round. Now, if he goes to the combine and runs a real fast forty, he, his stock will go way up. Uh, they question that he's not a four or five guy. Uh, I don't know if he is or not. I know he's a great player and he's going to be a great NFL football player. Um, but sometimes the statistics, when you go to the combine, if you run really fast, all of a sudden your stock rises. You're not the kind of coach who wears a stopwatch around your neck, are you? <laughs> no, we never time them in 40s. I don't want to know how slow we are. <laughs> <laughs> Just make the play. Just make the play. Well, that's what I would figure the story would be. Coach, it's always great catching up with you. Now, are you going to get a little uh, – once the recruiting deal is over, do you get a little vacation? Do you take a little time off? Do you do you get any time to relax? Uh, or do you just kick back in Ocean Beach and keep working? <laughs> Well, I noticed that last night when they asked Saban. I thought that was a little ridiculous. You know, he he's going to enjoy it for two days, and then they're going to go back to work. Well, guess what? We we our coaches don't come back to work until Thursday. We've actually taken about ten days off. Good, but, but there's no more vacation time till July. All right, Coach. Well, we love having you on the program as always. It's great catching up with you, and uh, congratulations on a great season overall. Nine and four, uh, coming off an eight and five, and uh, man, uh, seventeen wins in your first two years as head coach at San Diego State. It's never been done before. So, congratulations and thanks for the thrills. I appreciate it, guys. As always, thanks, All right, Coach. coach. Well, well.